Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about unit measures, which is a type of measurement and data question. This video is going to focus all about the number line. So let's begin by reading what we can expect in number line questions. Number line questions, as the name suggests, involve a number line. Usually these are straightforward, but we also have to be wary of the value of the intervals. It's often good for us to understand how negative numbers operate as well. More complex questions may require us to select an appropriate scale to use when all the numbers on the number line may not be provided. Number line questions, well, essentially, their name kind of tells you exactly what's going on. We're going to be dealing with some form of a number line in these questions. And basically these are to help us understand how numbers change and are a stepping stone to coordinate systems. So remember how coordinate systems are composed of two different number lines. So we've got two different axes. Well, number lines are the more simple version of that since we only have one axis to deal with. So that doesn't necessarily mean these questions will always be so simple. Obviously, we do have a difficulty curve. So in the beginning, we are just going to be seeing how numbers operate on the number line. It's often common that we actually learn how to count on the number line because they are such a good rep visual representative of how numbers can change. So addition would be going uh, to the right of the number line and subtraction would be going to the left of the number line. Now, things do get a bit more trickier when negative numbers are on the number line as well because when you have negative operations for your addition and subtraction, sometimes the addition or subtraction doesn't always go in the direction you kind of originally may think so. So, for example, if we have a positive number and another positive number and you add them, then it's all fine and good. We've got the basic addition going on. But if we have a negative number and we do the addition, then the number is slightly different since we do have to consider the negative or the other side of the zero. The real trouble begins when you do some the um the use of the operator where you've got a negative number and you minus a negative number. So that's actually a positive number. What if we minus a negative number as well? So this becomes negative one minus negative one. Well, in this scenario, since we have two of the subtraction symbols, they actually cancel out and turn into a addition symbol. And so this is the exact same as negative one plus one, giving us zero. It's sometimes easy to think about it if you say, for example, you can eat the food and you can not eat the food. But then what about the scenario where you say you cannot not eat the food? That brings you back to you can, that has the exact same meaning as you can eat the food because the nots end up cancelling each other out. And that's just the exact same scenario that's going on with the double negatives here. Now, the this is only the case if the negatives are right next to each other. So there's two negatives in a row. This cancels out to become an addition sign. Let's also see, um, you can also represent it on a number line where, for example, you've got the zero here, uh, one and negative one. You start off with the negative one and you want to minus, which would traditionally move you to the left of the number sign. But we're taking away negative one. So that means we have to actually go to the right of the number line, which gives us zero. Now, that would be the major kind of things you see in number line related questions. So those are typically fairly straightforward. Now, the bigger issue is when all the numbers on the number line aren't actually mentioned in the question. And that makes us, uh, forces us to figure out what the intervals of the number line actually represent. So for example, maybe we've got a bunch of lines and we've only got the numbers maybe uh, four and maybe t um, maybe it's got something wild like uh, 21 on this line. So clearly there aren't 
you know, what is it? 15 intervals in between. So each of these intervals must not be equal to one. So then how do we figure out what each of the intervals are equal to? Well, in scenarios like these, you have to see what the difference between the known values are. So that would be 21 minus 4. So that's equal to 17. Then we would see how many intervals are between these two numbers. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 intervals between. So what you do is divide that number you found by the number of intervals. So just because I made these numbers up in my head, uh, that would give us roughly 3.4. So then that would mean that each of these intervals are worth 3.4. And that would then allow you to figure out any number line, uh, any point in the number line, what that value is equal to. So those would be the main kind of techniques that you would employ for most number line questions. Let's see if we can apply what we just learned on this example question. This example question says, which letter on the number line is closest to the average length of a family size car? So we're seeing a number line here and we can see that it is a nicer number line because all of the numbers in, in the intervals of the number line has actually been provided to us. So we can simply read that each interval is representative of length and the units it's using is in meters. It's always quite important to note what units they're using because obviously it doesn't make sense to say that a car is for example, two centimeters long, it should obviously be in the range of meters and not something ridiculous like kilometers either. So always make note of units in your questions whenever you see them. Now, as for the actual question, it says, how long is an average sized car? Now, if you're like me, I don't actually know that much about cars because it's just not something that I'm interested in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try and use some logical reasoning to figure out the length of an average car. Think about your average car. It's got, um, if you draw like a quick car, eh, no. we've got something that looks like this with um, two wheels and we've got generally what we've got is a front passenger seat and a back passenger seat so because cars are generally driven by adults and that means an adult has to be able to sit at the front of the seat and be able to fit their legs and an adult is usually let's say an adult male would be roughly 1.8 meters tall. So about half their length would be their legs. So let's say about a meter, just roughly, uh, consists of their legs. So their legs have to fit in the car, obviously, for them to drive. So I would say this has to be at least a meter long. And an adult has to also be able to sit at the back of the car as well. So that also has to be a meter. Now, cars usually do have a trunk as well that also could roughly be a meter long and they also have a front where all the engine components are kept so that would also be another meter. So even if I don't really know anything about cars, I can generally estimate how long a car would be and so we can guess it's roughly one meter give or take a bit. Sorry roughly four meters, give or take a bit, given that cars generally do have a boot that needs to fit more than the length of an average human leg or the front, which needs to house all of the engine compartments. So let's say it's a bit more than four, four meters for an average sized car. If we take a look at the number line, the number four is where the number line represents the length of an average size family car. And we did say that the car is probably a little bit more to allow for um, more leg space for the people since if your car space was exactly the length of your legs, it would not be very comfortable. And cars do have to be comfortable for people to want to buy it. So we can assume that there is just a bit more leg space between each of these uh, estimated 
measurement. So I think the correct answer would have to be closer to five meters than three meters. So that would mean that the letter X is the representative of five meters on this specific number line since it's the letter directly above the increment for the number five. Therefore, the correct answer here would be option B. Okay, so this question just showed us an example of how we can read a number line and how that information can be related to what the question is asking us. So those would be the major kind of techniques that we would employ for number line questions. Hopefully this video ends up helping you out and thank you so much for listening.